Hey boys and girls, welcome back. Uh, we've got uh, another video for you today. It's not quite what I wanted to do, um, but uh, what we're going to be doing is um, a um, another tuning video, but with a twist. I hope you'll be okay with it. I got a little bit delayed uh, this weekend uh, because I found a major exhaust leak. And um, when you're going into tuning, an exhaust leak is no bueno. So um, what I'm doing is we're gonna go back to the desk and we're gonna do how to set up a, a dashboard for tuning, especially idle tuning. So we're gonna get into that as kind of a, a quick thing to do just before we get into actually getting in the car. Now, I know you may be saying, dude, come on. What are you gonna pull out a PowerPoint presentation next? Get to the car. But hold on, hold on. It's okay, we're gonna get in the car very soon. I'm gonna release another one in the next couple days where we're gonna get in and show examples of doing everything in the car. So we're definitely gonna take care of you. So without further ado, I will switch over to the desktop mode and we will go through how to make a dashboard so that you can see everything in one view and tune really fast. All right, so we're back in Tuner Studio and we're just gonna open up our project. In this case, I've got this project called My Car. And um, what we can do is go over here to Tuning and Dyno Views. And you're gonna see a couple, I think these are the default ones that, are, that will show up, Fuel Tab and also Dyno. So this is what we're gonna use as, we're gonna take this and we're gonna modify it. And that's an easy way to get started. This has a lot of nice information on it already. It's got your engine speed, your map, um, EGO correction values, which you want to know. Air fuel ratio is up here. It's nice and big. And we've got a bunch of little other smaller kind of things, like what the target is at any given moment, the air, engine speed in terms of uh, not a dial, um, you know, the duty cycle, everything, whatever's going on. And so a lot of these things are convenient to keep around. And so what we can do is go up here to file and you can come down here to tuning views and under load save, you can say export, save as. So what we're gonna do is export this view and um, start modifying it. So um, I've already done that, but I'll just select it again. I've created this one. I, I typed in dyno tune view, hit save. So then now you can come over here to this last tab and it allows you to add a tuning view, uh, view of your own. I already got one called idle, so we'll do this. And you should actually see it here in the list because you've if you saved it to the same default location, it'll say dyno user tune view as opposed to dyno default, which is the one that comes with it. So you can select that. If you don't see that, you can always hit other and then go here and search for it. And there it is. Um, and you, depending on where you saved it, uh, you may need to um, find it on your hard drive. But this is the default location. Um, you know, it'll be under under Tuner Studio Projects, which is the, the default place under your documents that um, and your project that um, it's going to save things unless you've changed it at some point. So I've got that set up. Say apply. So now I'm on the um, tuning view and close that. And I'm on idle two. So this is my own. I can now resave this with another name so it doesn't overwrite like the, uh, the dyno tune. So we can always go back. So I can s go back to tuning views. Load save, save tuning view. Oh, actually, I can export it just to be sure. And we might want to call this one idle2. All right. So as you can see right now, you can't really um, manipulate this. You can't really mess with it. You, there's a few buttons that you can click like that. Um, but what we want to do is kind of start modifying this. So what you can do is go up here to File and to New Views and then click on designer mode. And you can also get to this in any particular um, item. 
on the screen by going in here and clicking designer mode. So if you're not able to manipulate something specifically, then you can right click on it and get it to work. So in this case, what we're gonna do is, we don't really care about the fuel VE table because previously we turned on idle VE and that's the, what we're gonna do. So I've selected this, I'm just gonna hit delete, clear that off, and this grid pattern is just the basic you know, desktop. Um, that's, the, that's the back of the, the dashboard that we're setting up. And then you can kind of uh, grab these things and give yourself a little room. Well, this is the uh, to move it, but if you grab down here, you can resize things, and it should, um, you know, get a little smaller. And so let's see what happens here. Make it like that, and then um, we're gonna move it back into place. We don't need it to be quite so big. It's nice to have it a good size just because you know for readability purposes and also um, on a dyno tune view view you may be you know doing more stuff or you're tuning potentially street tuning or something and you want to just kind of see it out of the corner of your eye or so you know something like that so that's why these you know making these things ginormous is um, kind of cool all right, so this is gonna be our space where we're gonna put some new stuff that's gonna be specifically oriented towards idle tuning. So what you can do is right click anywhere in here, go into the designer menu, and we're gonna say new, and there's a bunch of things that you can you can do. So notice here, you can add a burn button, so you, can, you don't have to leave this screen to burn it. Um, a gauge cluster, which is kind of like what we have down there with the uh, the engine speed gauges and all that, and a settings panel, tuning table, and so on. And so what we're going to start off with is a tuning table. So that puts up this little widget. We can select a table, and this takes you through the tables that are actually the same menu items as, as what you've got up here. So in this case, we're going to go to emission settings, and you can see that we've got a few things. Uh, I'm sorry, to start up idle. We've got all these tables, which are useful for idle, and to choose from. So the first one we're gonna do, I think, is this warm-up enrichment. And we can just grab that little red corner and get that set up. Um, put that right there, maybe. You can put it wherever you want. But this tells you your current warm-up enrichment um, curve here so this this is the curve and um, you know honestly I don't really care about the uh, the graph too much itself I like the table that makes it easier um, and so you can just you know make this fit so that's one thing so now let's go back in and uh, do another one and this time, we are looking for the idle VE table, there it is. And uh, so we've got that up. And what this is gonna do is it's gonna show you a little marker where it is um, in terms of where it's idling. So as the RPMs go up and down, it's gonna move around and stuff like that. So as it warms up, that uh, the RPMs will come down. If you blip the throttle, you'll see it go up and then come back down and it'll, it'll settle down, you know, somewhere around, you know, here or something like that is where it likes to live. Um, so these all look pretty rich. So we will see, you know, kind of what it looks like. I don't want to change anything beforehand. I want to listen to the car first as it, you know, basically as soon as it turns on, I want to see what the cranking stuff is like. So, all right. So what else do we want to get here? Let's, um, I think there's a couple more tables that we want to grab. So let's get the, uh, we've got the idle VE. Let's get the idle initial um, where is that? Yeah, oh. right there. Idle initial values, and I don't really care that that overlaps, but you could squeeze it in to make it look all nice, you know, as you want. Um, 
And so here's the initial values that it's going to jump to in terms of your idle valve. Um, so this remember this gives it a hint of where you want um, the uh, idle valve to be positioned based on um, when it starts going into the PID idle control. So your closed loop idle. And now we want to get a new um, yet another table, but this time we want our I want to know what um, the advance is at any given moment. So you can see down here. This is a little sm small at this point, but. You can see down here, these are these are the advanced cells that we're going to care about in this case. So um, it's going to show you what the, what the timing is at any given moment. So down in here, you can see it's mostly going to be in the 15s um, where we care about for idle, you know, maybe a little bit advanced. And so if you have the box checked to um, use idle advanced to help control uh, your idle, then you can see what it's what it's doing, you know, that it's using that idle advanced to, to control your uh, idle RPMs. And since I really don't care about this chart, I'm just going to give myself some more space. Um, and why don't we get a burn button on there? Wow, that's a big one. Okay. So I don't know. Blip right there. Um, we can put it wherever we like. And um, while we're at it, see when you click into one of these, this is a, um, a gauge view or something. I think that's the name of this. Um, when you click into one of these, you can right click and you get a bunch of different options as far as your, um, um, you know, what things you can load into this. So these are various inputs and outputs that you can see. All right, and so you can see that there's a lot of things that you can change, you can add and change um, here on, on, if you go under dashboard designer, you can change a bunch of stuff for what's here, but I'm also gonna add something new and you can add a new gauge, indicator or label. In this case, I wanna add an indicator. And unfortunately it puts it like in a weird spot. <laughs> it's hard to, uh, Grab the bottom of it. There we go. If that's the case though, you can right click on it and you can get to the um, uh, properties dialog. And then that allows you to change the size if you need to. But anyway, let's set what kind of uh, indicator we want. And so you can see uh, there's a bunch of indicators here for um, the application predefined indicators and this is where I was talking about AC which is the one I think that I want to choose here but we also have various things like the fan and so on so let's go with AC all right and then let's fix our little AFR and we've got this which is a little big now let's make it a little smaller all right actually we can make this we got a little space, so we'll make that bigger. All right, so now we've got a little indicator that shows when our AC is on. So this should pop on when, um, you know, obviously you press the AC button and the fan is on at least one, I think. And um, so that can show kind of what the idle up is doing, if the idle up is enabled and, and if it's working or not. All right, so I think that's good. That's a good start. There's always a bunch of stuff you could potentially add, but this is really, you know, I think good for most of our purposes. So we can go up here, zoning views, turn off designer mode again. Uh, if you like, we can go in here and save this one. Um, so now this is what it looks like. And um, all this stuff is gonna be dynamic. So when you actually get in the car, turn it on to the on position, not started yet, these things will come up and you're gonna see, you know, all, all this information Brighten. It's going to grayed out right now because it's not connected. 
but then as the car runs it's going to show an indicator that's going to move around so you're going to see where all this stuff is so the technique that we're going to use um, you know is basically just to watch all this stuff listen very closely and see what's happening and as it's going through the various states especially this like coolant as it warms up you can change these to basically look at um, kind of your two important things here are going to be your AFR and your map so the map um, you want to tune to a particular um, kind of as much vacuum as you want uh, idle is typically happiest when it's at pulling kind of as much vacuum as possible so you want the, the number to be kind of low um, and then uh, so it's going to be around like 30 30 to 35 or something like that depending on you know what your intake is doing how restrictive that is um, but uh, then your AFR on a 1.8 or so is going to be happiest probably you know most cars is going to be like maybe a little under stoichiometric 14.7 if you're on a 1.6 it's going to be probably happier around the upper 13s or 14.0 somewhere like that but we'll see um, what it looks like I have a 1.8 so we'll see kind of how that goes so we've got our idle tab here the next time you open up your project it's going to be there and we'll get ready to uh, tune finally sorry for the wait guys um, so I'll see you in the next one it should be released uh, very quickly. I'm going to get out to the car basically right now and start that process. So um, yeah. So if you enjoyed this content, please consider subscribing. Give me a like. Share it to all your friends. Um, as I said before, this applies to more cars than just the Miata. This gauge setup applies to anyone who's using Tuner Studio and Megasquirt or some other ECU that uses Tuner Studio. So um, Feel free to pass the love on. Thanks a lot, and I'll catch you next time.